As Germany prepared for the imminent invasion of Great Britain in 1940, the British military summoned several intellectuals to come up with an effective way of pushing back the Germans and preventing them from landing men on their beaches. However, the British had little ammunition, artillery guns, and the required defenses to stop an amphibious invasion. And thus, several World War I veterans suggested the unusual use of oil to defend Britain's shores. This unexpected idea would lead to creating the unprecedented Ministry of Petroleum Warfare to test a unique array of flammable weapons to fight off the Germans. As seen in footage taken at the time, underwater flame weapons, flame fugaces, underground mortars, and more were just a part of the destructive circles of hell that awaited the Germans if they dared to invade Great Britain. War against Hitler The early 1930s saw the rearmament of Germany under the country's new leadership as Adolf Hitler and the National Socialist Party took control of the political sphere with one objective in mind, to make Germany great again. After a decade of humiliation, inflation, food shortages, and unprecedented unemployment rates provoked by the harsh Treaty of Versailles of 1919, Hitler and his party had the people's resentment on their side. The Third Reich then built its military from the ground up, and the Wehrmacht soon showed its might with a swift expansion and technological development. Once his armed forces were ready, Hitler made use of his diplomatic abilities to annex all of Austria in 1938, and later reclaimed the Sudetenland region for his Reich. The British and the French grew preoccupied with this rapid expansion, and immediately saw it as a direct threat to their economic and political prosperity. Germany was rising again, and they had to stop it. Despite signing the Munich Agreement on September 30th, 1938, to stop Hitler's desire for retaking the territories that once belonged to the Prussian Empire, the Fuhrer pushed it too far. In September of 1939, Germany and the Soviet Union invaded Poland and divided the country in two with the direct cooperation of Joseph Stalin. Hitler's belief that neither Great Britain nor France would take direct action was proven wrong when days later, both countries declared a state of war against Germany. However, their armies were swiftly routed once the Wehrmacht mobilized its forces with the Blitzkrieg Doctrine. Following the retreat of Dunkirk between May 26th and June 4th of 1940 and the surrender of France, the United Kingdom was left alone to fight against the German war machine. During these perilous months, the British Isles became partially isolated, as convoys sent from the US carrying goods, food, and weapons were constantly sunk by the Germans. What's more, rumors started circulating that the Germans would invade the mainland with simultaneous amphibious assaults. As the British intelligence discovered that these plans were accurate, the military realized that they had a big problem. There was a shortage of weaponry of all sorts, many of which had been lost during the retreat from Dunkirk, and they knew they could not stop a full-scale German invasion with their current resources. Desperate Measures In the aftermath of Dunkirk, the war between the British and Germans turned more personal, and Prime Minister Winston Churchill ordered the indiscriminate bombardment of the Ruhr. Hitler retaliated by approving Hermann Göring's request to send Luftwaffe bombers to isolate British cities and destroy critical objectives. As the invasion of Great Britain loomed closer, the Ministerial Committee on Civil Defense gathered to come up with ideas for the most cunning way to defend their shores. Sir John Anderson, Secretary of State for the Home Office and Home Security, asked for alternatives besides the conventional military defenses, but the entire cabinet remained silent and looked puzzled. It was Maurice Henke who finally broke the silence and spoke up. Henke was a civil servant who had been part of the Imperial War Cabinet during World War I and had been part of hundreds of war meetings with a lot of knowledge about unconventional warfare. The veteran addressed the cabinet and suggested the use of burning oil for defensive purposes. Sir John Anderson and several members blinked and were baffled, but Henke continued, quote, Oil should not just be denied to an invader, but used to impede him. Hanke remarked that successful experiments with oil had been conducted during the previous war and could be ideally used to defend the British Isles. Furthermore, one of the few resources that the British had in spades was petroleum oil. The idea could work, after all. After getting approval, 
Hanke presented his ideas to the Oil Control Board and managed to convince them. Then, on June 5, 1940, Churchill got on board and told the Secretary for Petroleum, Jeffrey Lloyd, to give Hanke complete control of the project. The Flame Fugasa The Petroleum Warfare Department, or PWD, was created to focus on developing weapons and tactics involving petroleum. Sir Donald Banks, a renowned war hero, was appointed to lead this unique department, and one of the first experts invited to join it was William Howard Libbins, the creator of the Libbins Projector. This mortar-like weapon used during World War I could throw large drums filled with toxic and flammable chemicals to clear trenches. During a July test at Dumpton Gap, Livens blew up several five-gallon drums of oil at the beach to resemble a fugasa-like weapon that could be used on water. A conventional fugasa was a century-old improvised mortar created by making a hole in the ground and filling it with explosives and gunpowder. The explosives were then detonated from afar with a slow match or a burning torch to prevent friendly losses. The petroleum warfare team then experimented with 45-gallon steel drums buried in earthen banks, triggered by a small explosive that ruptured the drum and led to a jet of flame that burst violently, reaching up to 3 meters wide and 27 meters long. The PWD dubbed it the Flame Fugasse. Petroleum Warfare as the experiments continued, the Petroleum Warfare Department came up with an ideal mixture that comprised 60% oil and 40% petrol. Another mixture, dubbed 5B, was also developed. It was a dark, sticky paste that burned upon impact and seemed to go on forever. The PWD would implement 5B against enemy vehicles to burn the crews before they had a chance to escape. Footage from the era shows how the Brits managed to use 5B and 65-gallon steel drums to destroy all sorts of armored vehicles when they came into contact with this type of fugasa. These first iterations featured two explosive devices. One was located at the front of the drum to ignite the fuel, while another placed at the back threw the fuel forward. The main design was a safety fugasa, which was excavated from the side of a slope, where an explosive barrel was placed horizontally with one of the sides facing towards the target. A section of drain pipe was placed vertically at the back of the barrel, and soil covered both the barrel and the pipe to the point that only the barrel's front disc could be seen from the ground. The propelling charge was prepared with an electrically triggered detonator, and footage shows this type of flame fugasa in action on the British coasts. As a hidden pipeline laid out into the sea below tide level carries the oil and ignition chemicals, small bursts emerging from the ocean show the oil slowly spreading through the water's surface. Within seconds, an entire area is covered with sticky chemicals. Upon triggering the devices, the oil ignites and flames quickly burst out to the skies, creating an impregnable wall of fire and smoldering smoke that would halt the advance of small boats with landing parties. The PWD deemed these pipelines the first line of defense against a German attack. And if the enemy managed to breach these outer circles of hell, the Brits would be ready for them on the other side. Extra Protection The idea behind Operation Fugasa was that if the Germans attempted to secure a beachhead, hidden installations were ready to give them a more than warm welcome. Hidden Fugasas strategically placed across the beach would be triggered to form a second inferno across the entire area, preventing the Germans from advancing or even burning them up. Those who went beyond the second wall of fire would be left without support and would fall victim to the British soldiers waiting for them in the vicinity. These second lines of defenses would have comprised safety fugasas and demigasas, which were simple barrels of petroleum laid horizontally with a tin charge in a shallow pit beyond the barrel's ridges. Upon detonation, the barrel would rupture and flip over, spilling its contents over an area of about 30 square meters. The footage shows how rapidly the fires spread through the entire beach, making it extremely difficult for the outsider to deploy troops for as long as the fugaces lasted. In addition, if the Germans decided to use paratroopers or aircraft to invade the countryside, the Brits also had a third line of defense that comprised hidden 65-gallon barrels primed to detonate when an enemy tank approached and specially developed vehicles that could fire improvised flamethrowers. Footage from the operation gives a sneak peek of soldiers preparing the barrels for action against armored vehicles. As for the paratroopers and low-flying aircraft, 
The Ministry of Petroleum Warfare also had a mobile anti-aircraft flame unit that could project massive tongues of flame to take down aircraft. Over 50,000 flame fugasa barrels were distributed across England, especially the southern portion, and several remains can still be seen as a reminder of a German invasion that never happened. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of this unique type of shore defense. Also hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. And stay tuned.